Now, today we also have with us a very special guest uh, who I came to know a few years ago in some of the work we were doing with the spiritual state of this nation. Uh, Tony Perkins is the president of the Washington, D.C.-based Family Research Council. He's a former member of the Louisiana legislature where he served for eight years. He's recognized as a legislative pioneer for authoring measures like the nation's first covenant marriage law. Uh, he had no opposition for re-election, but he kept his pledge to serve only two terms. Uh, during that time, he joined the Family Research Council team as its president in the fall of 2003. He's launched a number of new initiatives to affirm the Judeo-Christian values that this nation was founded upon. Uh, he's led the way uh, in defending the religious freedom in the public square in America, protecting the unborn and their mothers, defending and strengthening one man, one woman marriage, and promoting pro-family public policy. Tony hosts a daily national radio program called Washington Watch with Tony Perkins and broadcasts a daily commentary heard on over 300 stations nationwide. His daily email, the Washington Update, is sent to tens of thousands of grassroots activists He's an effective communicator. He appears frequently on national broadcasts. You've perhaps seen him on CNN or Fox News over the years. Tony's first book, Personal Faith and Public Policy, was co-authored with Bishop Harry Jackson, Jr., released in 2008, and he is a keynote speaker in a number of organizations. Today, I've asked Tony to come, and we're going to spend just a few minutes talking about religious liberty. Would you welcome with me Tony Perkins from the Family Research Council? Tony, welcome to ORU. Glad you're here. Good to be here. Sure. Um, today, Tony, uh, tell us what is the Family Research Council and uh, how did you get involved in this ministry? Well, the Family Research Council, we've been in Washington, D.C. for 30 years and we work to uh, shape public policy as it pertains to families from a Christian perspective. But I'll have to tell you, Dr. Wilson, I never envisioned that I would uh, be in Washington working in public policy and politics. When I was 15 years old, I grew, I grew up about 45 miles from here in Cleveland, Oklahoma. And uh, the Lord called me to preach when I was 15 years old. Yeah. And I began preaching in nursing homes. Now, little did I know that that was preparation for politics. <laughs> because both groups are hard of hearing and slow of moving. Sure. Yeah. So... Uh, so, Tony, some of our students may have seen uh, some of the news that happened in 2012. A uh, very unusual occasion took place at Family Research County. Chill, you had a, a gunman enter the building. I actually took some shots, I believe. Uh, what happened during that time? It was quite a, quite a moment for you, I know, and for the ministry. Well, it was, uh, it was right after, you may remember, the, uh, the Chick-fil-A Appreciation Day where there was uh, folks all across this nation went into... Uh, support Chick-fil-A because of Chick-fil-A's stand for biblical marriage. And uh, we had been a part of that with uh, Governor Huckabee and promoting that. And uh, shortly after that, a, a gunman came into our building armed with uh, 100 rounds of ammunition and 15 Chick-fil-A sandwiches. Uh, his intent was to kill every member of our staff and smear a Chick-fil-A sandwich in our face. Uh, but the day before he came in, 100 intercessors were in the a media center at the front door of our building praying for our nation. And one, before they left, said, you know, we really need to pray for, for FRC and what is happening in our nation's capital. And they began to bind the enemy. And what was amazing about that year is that there was a lot of shootings. You remember the Colorado shooting and, and a number of shootings in which m massive damage was, a, mil uh, a, a lot of lives were lost, hundreds of lives were lost in all. In all. He never got past the, uh, the security desk at our building. He did wound our security guard who was unarmed but disarmed him, and he never got past the, uh, the security desk at our, our building. The Lord heard those prayers, and no doubt, I believe, the Lord uh, turned the enemy back at the gate and protected us in our building. Amen. Thank you, Tony. Praise God. Tony, this week... Um, Yesterday, the Supreme Court heard a case regarding Hobby Lobby stores and Obamacare challenging the requirement of Obamacare to provide birth control options, including the morning after pill, to employees. 
What does this case, it's uh, of course been all over the news, still in the news today, lots of talk shows are talking about it. What does it mean to America and what is your perspective on it? So th this is a landmark case and I'll just say I'm grateful for the Green family uh, and the Han family that was the co-plaintiffs in this case. I just flew in this morning from Washington. I was there yesterday, in fact had dinner with the Han family Monday night. You know, people want to say this is about contraception. This is not about contraception. It's not about abortifacients. That's one of the issues that's being dealt with in the courtroom. But what this is really about is about religious freedom. You know, we hear oftentimes about the freedom of worship. Our president says he supports the freedom of worship. But that's a truncated view of what the founders of this nation realized that we are endowed by our creator with, and that is the freedom of religion. The ability to live your life according to your faith and that is the issue that is being determined by the court. This, this idea that we have to compartmentalize our faith, that you're free to worship in here, you're free to follow God on this campus, and even you can take it to your home, but you have to check it at the gateway to the marketplace. That is not what the founders envisioned, and it's not what I believe we have been endowed by our Creator with, and that is the issue that the court is deciding in this case, and that's why I'm grateful that there are businessmen and women who are willing to take it on the chin, really. I mean, you realize what they're facing in terms of fines potentially being put out of business, but they understand the fundamental freedom that they're fighting for, and so I'm grateful, just as the men and women who serve on the foreign fields of battle, those that are willing to stay in the marketplace and stand for the truths of God deserve our admiration and support as well. Yes, they do. Thank you. So, Tony, as you, you're on the edge of some of these, uh, I think, spiritual wars in America. They've called them cultural wars. In many ways, they're spiritual wars for the heart of the nation. What can we do to ensure religious freedom in America in the future and around the world? Today in uh, this Religious Liberty Week, we're talking really about religious freedom globally. We have a number of students in this room that would love to know how to make a difference. What can we do to make a difference? Well, first, you, you point out this is a spiritual battle. We, the, we are not facing a physical enemy, all right? Those that support uh, abortion or whatever it may be, they're not our enemy. Our enemy is spiritual. We're dealing with powers and principalities against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. And the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're spiritual for the tearing down of these strongholds. Here is how we are to do this. And I hear this all the time when I travel the country. People say, well, well I, I'm so disturbed by what I see happening in our country. What can I do? Live your faith authentically before the Lord your God. Jesus is not just your Savior. He is your Lord. And He has to be Lord over every aspect of our lives. You know, Nehemiah in chapter 4, Nehemiah is a great book, but I, just, I leave you with this. To read Nehemiah chapter 4 and chapter 5, when Nehemiah goes back to rebuild the walls, his heart's broken for his people. And I believe first it starts with a broken heart for our nation, a broken heart for broken people all across this globe. But it requires prayer and a plan of action. And that's what Nehemiah did. But it was interesting how Nehemiah rebuilt the walls. He did it family by family, where they just stepped outside the threshold of their own door and they began to rebuild the walls. You know, you are about to embark upon a career. Many of you will soon be married and have families and children. The greatest contribution you can make and reaching this nation and the world is being a faithful husband, a faithful wife, a godly mother, a godly husband. And that's becoming increasingly difficult in our culture when we're challenged with all of these external temptations. Holiness before God and a devotion to live authentically as a follower of Jesus Christ, to minister in your home and to those in your neighborhood. And as, you are, as we are faithful in the small, God gives us greater opportunities to reach. But be authentic in your faith and make Jesus not just your Savior, but your Lord. Amen. Good word. Let's give the Lord praise for this word from Tony.
Tony will be doing his radio show from right here at ORU this afternoon later on. I hope to be on with him. Uh, the Religious Liberty Week activities continue. Tony will be speaking tonight at Zopelt Auditorium. We have Daniel, uh, Dr. Daniel Dreisbach with us, Dr. Timothy Shaw, Leah Farish, Dr. Alan Hertzke, Jacqueline Otto Isaacs. These are stellar leaders in the subject of religious liberty. We want you to be involved, and we want to stand so we can stand together around the world and worship Jesus freely. God bless you, Tony. Thank you for being here with us. Give him another hand, please.